the first thing I'd like to do before we get started with any commands or anything like that is just take a look around Kali Linux and kind of demonstrate why a pen tester or ethical hacker might use this distribution of Linux. Now, throughout the course, as stated in the last video, you might see a different version of this pop up as I recorded videos on some of the older versions. Everything should still work just as is. You just might see a different uh, look and feel to some of the Kali interface, but all the commands I'm going to show you, everything that we do is going to be the same. So let's take a look and just explore Kali Linux just for a bit. So if we come up here into the corner and we just click on the little Kali logo, you could see that we have nice things broken out for us. So we've got these favorites up here, which we have our terminal, which we're going to be living in essentially. We've got a text editor. We've got a web browser, which is basically Firefox. We've got some other tools down here, docs, etc. The other thing that we can come scroll through is we can see that we have different applications in here. Um, if we look at the different sections, these kind of go in order, which we haven't covered quite yet, but in the order of how a hack might go down. So information gathering is usually the first step. You can come in here, look through this, and here's a bunch of tools related to information gathering. You can even click into these and go deeper if you wanted to related to specific things. So DNS or SMB or open source intelligence, all of this that's in here, uh, this is just built in tools. So let's say we're coming in here and we want to do a wireless attack. Well, we go to wireless attacks, We've got a bunch of tools already built in. So Kali Linux is just essentially a ethical hacking distribution of Linux and it's built on Debian. So if you've ever used something like Ubuntu or anything along those lines of a Debian distribution, this is all going to feel really familiar to you with just a bunch of tools built in on top of it. So fairly straightforward. They do have some nice tools in here. You can come through and utilize these. A lot of this is already built in and we're going to take a look at that as we go. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is and throughout the rest of this course is start looking at the terminal. So if you come up here, you'll see that we have a terminal. Now, mostly everything that we do is going to be done in this terminal here. Now, this is almost like accessing the command line. So if you're using a command line like in um, Windows, for example, if you ever use a command line, if not, that's OK. But we do a lot of this from this interface as opposed to maybe utilizing a GUI based interface where if we clicked a folder, this might look more familiar to you if you're a Windows or Mac user. We come in here, you have this kind of area. Eh, yeah, we can do that. And sometimes we'll utilize this, but a lot of times we're going to be living right here. Okay. So um, as we move forward, we're going to start talking about this command line, how we can utilize it and use it to our advantage. And then we'll do some tips and tricks and um, hopefully learn some pretty neat stuff as we go. So in the next video, I'm going to cover the pseudo feature, which I think is important. It's something that was brought in. Now, originally we had something called a root permission and we'll talk about that. That has changed since 2020.1 moving forward. So we're introducing that into this course and we'll talk options that you have. So let's go ahead and move to the next video where we talk about the pseudo feature.